Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about future sex. In this video, I'll consider how sexual recombination is likely to change in the future. I won't be discussing anything to do with the mechanics of sexual intercourse, just the information theoretic aspects of sexual recombination, so there's a whole bunch of viewers who can probably stop watching at this point. One conclusion will be that I expect future sexual recombination to be very different from what the way things are in the current situation. Sex has been described as being nature's masterpiece. It took a long time to evolve, and it might have been responsible for the proliferation of forms seen in the Cambrian explosion. To start off with, I'll say what I mean by sex. Sex is recombination with outcrossing that's typically beneficial to both the parties involved. Um, and it's necessary to claim that the act has to be beneficial in order to distinguish sex from diseases, so it's quite common for an organism to inject its genetic material into another organism and then it be incorporated into that organism's offspring. Um, however, that's a type of um, disease, basically, um, and shouldn't be viewed as being um, analogous to sex. Sex is um, a similar kind of situation, but the female um, actually actively participates and willingly incorporates the injected genetic material um, into her offspring rather than doing it um, against her own genetic best interests. So, um, sex is a big source of puzzle to biologists. Um, for a long time it was thought that sex was explained um, and there were a whole bunch of theories that proposed various benefits to sex. It was thought that sex combined beneficial traits into a single organism, um, thereby speeding up evolution. And it was thought that sex generated variation to allow organisms to cope with variable environments. Um, however, around about the 1960s it was discovered that most of the existing theories about why sexual recombination existed in biology were incorrect. And um, the reason was that it was discovered that there was a um, high cost of sex and that any theories about the origin of sex or the maintenance of sex had to take that high cost of sex into account. And the high cost arises from several sources. Um, there's the cost of making males, um, and then there's the cost of um, each type of organism attracting members of the opposite sex, and then there's costs associated with actually having sex. Um, so the costs, um, often referred to as the twofold cost of sex, um, normally for most organisms without parental care, it's a factor of two, so you're wasting um, half the energies that you'd be um, using to generate offspring if you were um, generating them asexually. Um, and the resources are just being wasted, basically. So um, sex has to provide fairly strong immediate advantages in order to counteract the costs of it. Um, the, another theory was that sex was maintained by group selection or species selection, and there was some support for that from the distribution of asexual organisms on the phylogenetic tree of life. So um, often the asexual organisms were on the twigs, which is where you'd expect them to be if it was group or um, or species selection that was acting against asexuality. Um, however, there are a variety of organisms that have sex some of the time and reproduce asexually the rest of the time. And in order to explain organisms that um, only reproduce sexually when they want to, um, it's necessary to um, propose an immediate short-term advantage to having sex. And two main theories arose that um, had such short-term advantages. Um, one was a mutation repair theory. Um, probably the most prominent advocate of that is a man called Richard Mitchod. Um, and that proposes that um, organisms have sex in order to concentrate their deleterious mutations into a small number of offspring who then die, and then the remaining offspring um, have fewer mutations. So it increases the, um, the kind of variation of the number of mutations between your offspring. So some offspring then are very mutated and die, and other offspring are much less mutated than average, and they're the ones that go on to, um, to produce the next generation, basically. So that was one theory about um, why sex might exist. Um, another theory is Bill Hamilton's theory, the Red Queen theory. Um, that's the idea that um, the reason sex exists is to help organisms outrun their parasites. So if you produce uh, offspring that's a clone of yourself, then it's likely that all the pathogens that are collected in your body will then go straight off into the um, offspring and infect it with all the same diseases that you've got. And um, one of the reasons that we've got sexual recombination is to provide some variability in our offspring that's sufficient to um, allow um, pathogens to or make pathogens have a harder time of tuning into the kind of frequencies of the um, genomes of a particular lineage. So, um, and neither theory is adequate to explain sexuality on its own, but between them, it um, looks as though they cover the reasons um, sex exists fairly well. So um, that's um, why we've got sex, or that's the current biological theories behind why we have sexual recombination. Um, if you 
consider what's going to happen in the future. Um, there's not been all that much literature written about it. Um, one source of um, speculation on the topic is this book, um, Mendel's Demon by Mark Ridley. Um, that includes a section about the um, biology of sex. He suggests that um, sex will exist in the future, but he doesn't think that separation of sexes will exist, so there won't be male and female genders. And on that topic he writes, earthling life is gendered, but this will probably prove to be a freakish condition in life as a whole in the universe. The absence of gender in the angels may be one reason for their superior biological complexity. And um, by angels, he's just talking about our descendants, basically. Um, so that's his take on things. I agree that sex is likely to exist in the future. Um, the reason he gives so isn't very convincing. He says um, it's because of the... Um, the gene repair theory and that unless we find a way of reducing mutation rates um, we'll need sex to um, to play that role for us and that argument's not very convincing because we already have um, immensely superior error correction and detection um, technologies than merely making backup copies and swapping genes over at random and um, that's a ridiculous error correction strategy if you can take into account modern technology so um, his conclusion's right but I don't agree with the um, reasoning behind it and um, I'm sceptical about his reasoning about um, the genders not being separated as well um, he cites a theory about mitochondria for the reason we have separated genders and that's part of the truth but there's uh, another theory which proposes that um, one of the reasons we have genders is because distributing small gametes is um, kind of one job and um, collecting um, small gametes and incorporating them into a, a nutrition um, providing system to generate the next generation is another kind of specialization and the different sorts of specialization require um, different types of um, morphology so um, it's quite possible that being a male you might have to engage in male combat so maybe you've got big antlers or some other kind of um, speciality um, whereas if you're female that would just be dead weight and um, you don't need to fight other males if you're a female males fight over you um, so um, different kind of roles um, produce the separation of the sexes basically you can't easily combine the male, male body form and the female body form into one organism and get kind of the best of both worlds whereas if the sexes are divided um, the separate morphology needed to be a male the kind of weapons and all the other things that you need to distribute your um, gametes effectively um, and the female specializations they don't have conflicting um, they don't conflict with each other because they're not actually in the same um, organism anymore and there's no twofold cost as far as having separated genders goes so um, there's, there's no um, disadvantage to, or not much disadvantage to doing that so um, um, some other issues um, I think that we'll have um, small and large gametes in the future um, it makes sense to specialise in um, distributing small gametes and um, yeah, having a nutrition providing centre that collects information and then makes another generation out of that um, I think that we'll have gender or something a lot like it um, so I don't agree with Matt Ridley on that for the reasons I've just given um, we might not have kind of specialist male and female genders but we might have a male female spectrum um, something like that um, and um, another issue is whether or not we'll have um, two sexual partners at the moment. Most sex um, takes place between two organisms. Um, even in fun fungi where they've got multiple sexes, um, you still have sex between two um, organisms at a time. Um, and that's probably not going to happen in the future if you look at um, companies and computers which are the main sources of inspiration for how recombinations like to work in the future then you'll see that um, software engineers take um, bits of code from all over the place and um, combine them in the next um, iteration of a program um, so yeah there's no um, restri restriction or restraint that means that we can only have sex um, with one um, partner at a time and yeah um, future sex will probably take place between multiple partners um, and the other issue is is um, will we have multiple gene swaps in each generation at the moment um, half your genes come from one parent and half your genes come from another one um, and um, it seems likely that we'll have less need for um, such things in the future. That's um, partly a defence against pathogens, and pathogens seem much likely to play a much smaller role in the future. Um, and the the gene repair theory of sex um, also is going to be less potent in the future, so there's going to be less need to have sex. Um, and correspondingly um, less recombination will take place so um, it seems unreasonable to expect that there'll be that, that kind of um, extent of crossing over in the future so um, sex will probably work quite differently in the future and um, it seems reasonable to expect that there'll be much less of it um, enjoy <laughs>